When you research Mount Washington, it highlights the extremes. The fastest wind speed ever directly observed by humans at 231 miles per hour. You could get snow, you could get freezing fog, you could get normal fog, you could get beautiful views and clear skies. We had the winter high speeds when I was on shift of 150 mile per hour winds. You can't even fathom what that wind speed feels like until you're in it. Welcome to Mount Washington, renowned for having the world's worst weather. Ironically, on this day, the weather couldn't be more perfect. When you research this, I was like, what am I doing? Meet Trisha, a Brockport meteorology student and intern at the Mount Washington Observatory, as she takes us through her experiences on the mountain. <laughs> I was driving eight hours from Brockport, by myself to go live on a mountain with people I have never met other than a Zoom call. But it was it is the best experience of my life. It's insane that I get to wake up here every day and get to experience this all the time. It's, it's insane. I do a lot of different things. So I do everything from forecasting, research, help with instruments, we do a lot of shoveling. We ensure that hikers are going to be safe when they're coming up. All right, so one of the first things we do in our day is broadcast to uh, local AMC huts, which is where hikers go to stay. Good morning, everyone. This is 2-0 with your morning weather. The current temperature on the summit of Mount Washington is 42 degrees. So we actually have a summit cat. Only Nimbus lives up there 24 seven. He is the happiest little cat. He loves food as any cat does. And it really helps having a companion up there other than your, your coworkers. Shifts on the summit last for seven days before returning to the base. So the team has living quarters that include a living room to unwind, bedrooms, and a kitchen where volunteers prepare their meals. You know how they say at colleges you have the freshman 15? We call it the summit 15 because the food is so good up here. We have so much that we easily get the summit 15. <laughs> Every six hours we go and replace the precipitation can. This helps us get the measurements inside of how much snow and rain have actually fallen. Trisha's research on the summit has been so valuable that it will develop into a 30-year project aimed at helping researchers understand the long-term climate in this area. Once we have the precipitation in the can, uh, we can go back in, measure it, and um, add it to our data set. All right, head on out. So whenever we're not in the clouds, in the fog, um, we have to, it's called the sling psychrometer. This helps us determine what the relative humidity is. So we just stand out here and uh, twirl this thermometer. One of them is wet, so we're trying to have the liquid evaporate. The other one is just a normal thermometer and we plugging that into an equation will then get you the relative humidity. This, this opportunity came from my education at Brockport, and you don't have to go to the most expensive school to get these experiences. This is the highest point in New England, and this is where we have all of our instruments. Everything that I have done so far, I'm like, I am so in love with this. Brockport definitely supported me and got me to the places I am today. 